Honorable Mehmet Nosh, Minister of Trade, Honorable Foreign Minister of Pakistan, Bilawal Bhutto Sahib, Honorable Minister of Commerce from Pakistan, Sayyid Naveed Kama, Honorable Mustafa Tutso, Deputy Trade Minister, Honorable Nail Olpak, President Dick, Ministers and prominent businessmen from Turkey and Pakistan, government officials, excellencies, ambassadors, ladies and gentlemen, Assalamu alaikum and a very good morning. It is really a pleasure to address this very important business forum of DAIC and I had the honor and pleasure to meet most of you during my previous visit to this great brotherly country. And today is a time when the entire world is passing through <clears throat> very difficult challenges <clears throat> as a result of COVID and then this ongoing war and of course other difficulties. And as they say, when the going is tough, I have amended this quote, then the tough gets tougher. So I think this is what we should be doing today. We had uh, a great uh, get-together last night where we had very frank discussion. And obviously I'm not going to repeat what I said last night. Suffice it to say that we are here to convey this message to our Turkish brothers and sisters, President Tayyip Erdogan and his team, and to Turkish business community, that we genuinely and seriously want to work with you not only to further strengthen our brotherly relations that has taken care of itself from centuries what is very important at this point in time is to transform this brotherhood and fraternity into promoting our trade, investment, and cultural relations. And it's not difficult. That even, though, even though we don't speak uh, the same language, but we come from the same religion, even we don't understand Turkish or Urdu extensively, but we come from the same culture and we have shared history and we have been partner with each other, supporting each other through thick and thin. And it is a matter of record that in contemporary history, I have received hundreds of Turkish businessmen from 2008 to 2018 and also your active participation in investments in Pakistan is highly appreciated. And above all, your uh, contribution in 
humanitarian projects in Pakistan is very well known. I said this last night and even at the cost of reputation that the entire population of Pakistan witness your great efforts during earthquake, during floods, led by my brother, Excellency President Tayyip Erdogan himself and the First Lady. Today, we are here to seriously engage ourselves with you because you are very serious-minded business people and your achievements are outstanding. It's a shining example for all of us. I wouldn't want to take more time because we are going to listen to you today. But let's do three, four, five things so that we are able to achieve our targets. Pakistan has a buoyant automotive industry and yours is far superior, no doubt about it. But then it's a question of, uh, you know, competition and in order to promote our sales, not only between two countries to third countries, let's collaborate and cooperate. For example, in your automobile industry, as I said, your quality is second to none. You are uh, exporting to Europe. So those standards have to be met. But what we can do is, you know, through mutual agreements, manufacture parts and components of uh, automobiles at uh, lower cost because your labor is very expensive. Ours is still comparatively cheaper. So we can have this wonderful win-win uh, collaboration in this automobile industry. And then, of course, you produce your own grain and you are self-sufficient in wheat. We know that. But your textile industry is again you know, very strong. Pakistan textile industry is also you know, very uh, rich in experience and we have you know, great giants sitting here on the right side who are leaders of textile industry. So again there can be you know, space and gaps to be filled by joint cooperation in textile, for example. I mean, without going into details, this is again uh, a win-win, you know, you know, collaboration between uh, two brotherly countries. And then you are far ahead of Pakistan. Uh, in fact, you are uh, uh, one of the world's leading country in building dams, hydro power generation projects and then renewable energy. We discussed Zolo last night. So your capacity to build dams and uh, hydro power generation should be leveraged by us in Pakistan. So you will invest money get profits and we get cheap hydro power electricity. This is a great vision which we must you know, actualize through joint discussion and quick decision. Similarly, in renewable energy, we have uh, great potential in Sindh, in Balochistan, in KP and in Punjab like uh, wind power generation, already Turkish companies, uh, as I speak, we know, are already 
uh, active in, in Pakistan, in Sindh, in Punjab. And let's promote this, uh, you know, solar energy and, and wind power for two reasons. Uh, a developing country like Pakistan cannot afford prohibitive bill of billions of dollars to France are very expensive oil and gas and other related items. We cannot. So we have to replace our import of uh, raw material by, you know, enlarging the scope of hydro power generation and renewable energy. And this is, I mean, a wonderful combination. Great investors are sitting here on my left, experts and experiences with you. Please come to Pakistan and all our cascade from uh, Deamir Bhasha down to Tarvela Dam and Mangla is full of potential of 40,000 megawatts. 40,000 megawatts. And this will have uh, two wonderful impacts. That it will control flash flooding, uh, uh, flash flooding, it will definitely be very helpful because once you have such floods, it is devastating and we've seen in 2010. And two, you know, exploit these great potential points and convert them into energy. So, how to go about? These are matter of details. This late morning, I am just trying to, you know, elaborate broad parameters of our future cooperation, which must be kick-started before I finish my, my humble, you know, comments. And three, you will have uh, uh, profits and we will have these great advantages, including, you know, restricting uh, desiltation process through this uh, investments from north to south. So I think these are some broad areas where our cooperation can be very, very productive and profitable. I, yesterday I met this young gentleman from Zulu. He is now bearded. I took uh, some 20 seconds to recognize him. And uh, so he's here. And they have been very keen. They have invested in sand and in, 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 in wind power. And they were very keen to invest in solar. <coughs> Finally, this moment has come. And all uh, hurdles have been cleared. So what I'm saying is that these are milestones to be achieved. Only then will this have a semblance of reflection of our brotherly relations, which are very genuine. Uh, they're not artificial. I mean, a taxi driver here in Ankara or in Istanbul or in Lahore in Karachi or Peshawar or Quetta, I mean, once he knows that a Turk um, brother is sitting in his taxi, he will say, I will not charge you, as they would not charge in Istanbul or in Ankara or uh, somebody sipping coffee in a Turkish uh, uh, coffee shop. Once he's known that he's from Pakistan, they will say, thank you. You are a brother, Kardesh. So I think this is what the spirit is all about. And it is not from today or yesterday. It is from centuries, my brothers and sisters. So I'm here today with my great team, you know, on left and uh, right, and of course, on the right side, on the left side, to convey this message to you in no uncertain terms and, and absolutely, you know, loud and clear that I will be, along with my, my colleagues, we will be, you know, welcoming you with both arms to come and invest in, Turk, in, in Pakistan, promote trade, and, you know, and through innovative measures, through modern technology and modern skills. We have a very uh, young population, you know, 60% uh, of our population, you know, span from uh, 
thank you, from uh, 15 years to 30 years. And it is a big challenge, but according to this Chinese uh, time-tested quote, a challenge has always with it, you know, opportunities. So, I mean, this young uh, generation in Pakistan, boys and girls, we can, and I offer uh, this, uh, uh, you know, you know, great you know, opportunity here that let's train them with, the, with modern skills and technology, IT-led technology, so that they are empowered and uh, then they become great, uh, you, know, you know, leaders of Pakistan. And today, I'm telling you that our neighboring country, India, their IT field exports something like $200 billion worth uh, uh, IT products, and ours is just $1.5 billion. It's a shame. So I think this is again a great, uh, you know, opportunity for us to collaborate, and we can. We have now a sizable base of uh, IT, uh, you know, knowledge in Pakistan. But this needs to be, uh, you know, further multiplied, manifold. So this is again a great uh, area of cooperation. Similarly, agriculture, dairy, farming. I know a project is coming up in Lahore through joint venture. You know, Mia Mancha, I think he's putting up a dairy farm with Turkish, you know, collaboration. So all this is very well, very good. But then it is not enough. Rather, it's very, you know, it's insufficient and does not reflect our, our brotherly relations. So let's resolve today. I've requested my brother, Trade Minister, that before we conclude this meeting, uh, you must sign a letter of intent that, yes, through our, our untiring efforts, we shall achieve uh, a trade, bilateral trade figure of $5 billion in two years to come. Difficult, but not impossible. Nothing is impossible in this world, provided we have the will to do. Uh, Honorable Foreign Minister has reminded me of this uh, visa issue, and uh, I want to tell you, uh, you know, categorically, that we will, inshallah, resolve this issue and, and uh, visa uh, will not be an obstacle. Rather, we will have this visa turn into visa where you, we, we all earn and spend. So let's do this in a, in a manner which is uh, befitting and uh, mutually beneficial. At the end, I'd like to quote Iqbal's part of stanza, which is very relevant in this day and age for both of our countries. Jahane taza ki hai, afkare taza se namut. Jahane taza ki hai, afkare taza se namut. Ke sang o khish se hote nahi jahan paida. Ke sang o khish se hote nahi jahan paida. Ke modern societies you know, innovative world and progressive societies, prosperous societies are not built through building palatial buildings and houses. If, uh, uh, if palatial houses were to be the hallmark of uh, modern societies, then let me confess and admit we have, uh, you know, such, uh, you know, Build fantastic buildings in Islamabad, in Lahore, in Karachi, in Quetta, in Peshawar. But that's not how, you know, you know modern societies are built. Iqbal says, Ke sango se hote nahi jahan paida. Through marble and brick and mortar, you can't build modern societies. It is only through innovation, through, through modern techniques, through knowledge, through hard work through untiring efforts, through sacrifice, which you have done and which we must do. And together, we will, inshallah, achieve our, our position uh, in the community of nations. Thank you very much. Allah bless you. And Turkey, Pakistan, those people,